come to order? <laughs> it's Tuesday, March the 3rd, 6.30. The meeting has now come to order. Will you please stand and we'll have our invitation led by Russell. Let's pray. Dear God, we uh, love you and we thank you so much for loving us and for the grace and mercy you give us that we uh, do not deserve, Father. And we just uh, pray that your presence will be with us tonight as we do your business in the city. Pray that you would just bless each person here as, uh, as they have concern and, and, and a desire to serve and to be a part of this city in a positive way, Father. And we just Seek your wisdom, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing and help us with that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Texas flag. Honor on Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Do we have any citizens' communications? No, ma'am. And we do not have a public hearing, so we will go to item six. Approve the minutes of the February the 10th, 2015 Zoning Board of Adjustment Meeting and the February the 10th, 2015 Regular City Council Meeting. Are there any questions or corrections? Council of Clay. Council of Moore. Get me at this time, is there a money? Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous motion passed. Item seven, presentation by the Chief of Police regarding the annual racial profiling report. Chief Barnes. Our council, uh, every year we're required by statute to provide the governing body uh, the racial profiling uh, report for the department. Uh, this has been sent off to the state and each one of y'all have a copy. If you have any questions for or regarding it, you'd be more happy to answer. Thank you very much. Item 8. Consider and take any action necessary regarding a request by Larry Nichol to sublease the property located at 601 Martin Duke Road to Ramra Kutera. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, would you like to address the council? Uh, yeah, I guess so. The curses are in the auto uh, tank body for many years. Uh, your father and son, uh, they're going to do that, uh, check the, it specifies that it is within the zone requirement of the area, and they agree to you know, the entire code. Provided the uh, fire inspector with the specs for the way things move, uh, and for back from it, but it's not significant. That's what they did in the body, that doesn't get the code. Thank you. Do you have any questions regarding that, Councilman Clay? Councilman Moore. Mr. Contreras, where were you shot prior to the Valstein. <coughs> Any 
is there um, a is there any discussion from anyone on the council regarding this? If not, is there a motion? Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. All of those in favor, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Number 10. Consider and take any action necessary regarding authorizing the mayor to sign a resolution requesting and supporting an amendment to the definition of municipality in the Texas Local Government Code. Do you have any questions regarding this councilman play? Uh, how did we get there? Because of a lawsuit? That how Julie. it all happened? Julie. Julie, you want to articulate the municipality? How we got there? I don't know. Why do we have to do something? Uh, <laughs> yes, um, I, I, I will start off by saying that um, the, the town of Lakewood Village asked us to prepare that summary of the case for them. Uh, when we did it, we did not realize they were going to leave it on our letterhead and not put it on their own before disseminating it out to the entire municipal clerks association. Um, but that's that's how our letter <laughs> came to be on there. Uh, they were involved in a case that relates to the right of that city to do certain things with flats and building permits within their ETJ. They are a general law city similar to Van Alstein. And um, the trial court ruled in their favor and then the court of appeals reversed the trial court and said in parts of chapter 212 which is the platting chapter when it says municipality it's inferring to or referring to a home rule municipality and in practicality municipality is defined in that same code as general law home rule or special law the definition includes all of them and so when the legislature says municipality, they mean all of them. If they mean home rule or general law, they specifically say, but the court kind of changed the definition or implied that the definition of that municipality could be read to mean only home rule in certain circumstances. And so that town is appealing to the Supreme Court, but that town council also contacted their local state representative there in Denton County and asked if he would support legislation to try to knock down the court opinion and they said that they would and recommended the state legislature recommended to the city that they try to get resolutions from other cities so he could use that to try to push it through and so that is what the resolution is the proposed bill attempting to change clarify the definition just so it's after the court case there's a legislative action which would then effectively overrule the court opinion but it the definition in my personal opinion was already clear and so you're just kind of adding a redundancy but that is this has been driven by the town of lakewood village i know they've got um quite a, a few resolutions back from cities that have adopted it in support. That, that's the genesis of that. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, I'm just trying to get that. Passing a resolution saying that we're in addition to the city we're in this town. Is that what the whole thing is? So we're in it's a resolution a resolution that supports passage of the proposed bill that's attached to it it, it adds a sentence to the existing definition of municipality it doesn't really change the definition Do it. Redundancy is always fun. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> is, is the support for this resolution is it kind of? You said there are a number of cities that join. Is it kind of regional or is it scattered over the state? 
Well, the ones I personally know of are regional. I think the email she sent it out on was was broader. Um, but I, I don't do a lot of work directly with Lakewood Village, so I haven't had a whole lot of communication with them on what they've gotten back statewide. But um, I, I probably personally know of probably 10 to 20 in the region that have passed it. Is there a motion that we adopt the resolution? We have a motion and a second on those in favor. It is unanimous. The next item on the agenda is item 11, consider taking the action necessary regarding accepting settlement agreement for TMLI. RP is related to claim for damage to the police garage building authorizing execution of the settlement agreement. The, this is the building that is directly north of City Hall. Uh, do you have any questions regarding It's the old galvanized metal building, half of its police garage seizures and other half is parks. Oh, okay. The uh, way TML deems that they call it the police garage. <clears throat> uh, the only question I have is yes. Okay, it said we already got 16000 uh, and then it said replacement cost less depreciation. When we fix it and build it and build it back, will we get more of that? This they don't have to return the depreciation? No, because they wanted to just settle with sixteen grand. And the building's a total loss. Okay, but I thought I thought the way the laws were written, like on my roof when they came and did it, there was a depreciation amount that was added in that they didn't pay. But after I built, put the new roof on and it paid for it, then they sent me the depreciation because there was no longer the depreciation amount included because you fixed it. Uh, but they don't do that. They want to they want they want to do that. It's just that claim that thirty thousand. Forty forty thousand. Forty thousand is what they said the building is worth. Yeah. They came out and did an appraisal a few years ago and said that the building is worth forty thousand. Right. When they came back and wanted to pay the claim for the total loss, they were only willing to pay a six hundred grand. Right. Um, to replace the structure, the lowest quote that we received was forty six thousand to replace it. Plus we we're gonna need to put if we were put it back in the same spot. We're going to need to put a masonry facade on it um, because it is in the central business district. Unless we, unless you did a variance, which, <laughs> which wasn't something that <laughs> typically is going to be very smart. We have to provide it. So. Yeah, but you have it. So the main thing was they weren't willing to pay anything over the 16. We said it's worth 46 because it is a total loss. Um, there's been quite a bit of debate. The only way that they would agree to the forty six thousand is if we uh, is if we brought it before council. Because it should be something that, that I, I resolve. Okay. However there's been so much discussion and back and forth okay. and we're at March of we're twelve months or fourteen months past when the actual event occurred. Right? Um, so we're paying as if the building's worth forty thousand, it's a total loss. They didn't pay us 46, they didn't pay us the remainder. So that's what we're asking for is for y'all. Getting to start being because we already got 16. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. We're, still, we're still working on the, the, uh, the fire department barracks. Okay. That's, that's an ongoing one. Okay. Yes, sir. So what's our, how are we going to do at our 46? They're going to cut us a check for the fire. We work out in the 16. Once it's completed, they're going to cut us a check. We're not, we're not completing it at this time. What, what, we're, what our plan is is to take it to the ground and build it somewhere else. Oh, I see. They're going to give you the check and... Right. They already give us the check for the 30. They're going to give us the check for the 30 and then we need to determine where we want to put it. And if we put it back in the central business district, then we're going to put a masonry facade on it. But since we have reoccurring... Since we have an issue with City Hall, uh, <coughs> that, that structure, there needs to be some more discussion before we either build it back there or we build it somewhere else. Reason being is 
we need to think a little broader about what are we going to be doing in city, city structures and how are we going to build out in the near future. But we are going to get to the six. We've already gotten 16, so we're going to get 30. That's our total. Yes, 46, 46 is the total, yes. Sir. And what action are we actually? They want to know that y'all are on board with us settling for the 46. The action is to accept the settlement. So, if that's what it's approached for, I think that's, that's fair. It's fair to the insurance company. It should be fair to the insurance company. Okay. 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 agenda item um, you can you can have an executive session on this on this agenda <coughs> item. I would probably wait and vote on this agenda item after the executive session though okay. the, the, this item is just do we accept the 40 uh, the, amount, uh, yes. the total amount yes. You don't want to accept that amount? Well, actually, I, I am in favor of that. If it, if it, if it wasn't wrong procedurally, I think it would be great to take a vote on this, this particular item now. If you could. And then, uh, well, we can take a vote on this because what you're talking about is replacing it where it's going, the possibility, which is an entirely different subject than what number 11 has for. Well, if the, if the discussion is to talk about where would the building be built and how you want to spend the $46,000, then that is okay. We can do that under um, discussing purchase ex exchange lease or value of real property since this does relate to real property. But if you vote on the item before the executive session it implies that you don't need the additional executive session information in order to make your decision. So that's what I'm saying to But this only asks for us, it, it doesn't pertain <coughs> to where, how, or what. It only asks do we accept this amount for that building. Is that correct? Number 11. Consider and take any action in accepting the settlement agreement for the claim for damages for the building and execution of the settlement agreement. That's all that 11 asks for. That is all it asks for, but the settlement agreement itself is for the city to receive money so that if you need to have discussion about how that money is going to be spent, before you vote, then you can do that in executive session. If, if that's not the discussion, then it should be placed on a future agenda. So procedurally speaking, do we table this until after the session, or do we just if you know, skip it for now? Just skip it until we have an executive session at the end of this Is this, Is this not here? something that would take some, it's not something that you just say, okay, we're going to put it here, or we're going to spend it there, or we're going to do that. To me, this would take quite a little bit more time than just a discussion and then the executive session, unless it was just one direction. My understanding, frankly, is that it is just just one direction. I, I think we're, we're prepared to take to take this uh, settlement. I think, uh, well, I haven't seen the vote yet, but uh, I, I know I'm not opposed to that. But for, for later on, we have some building issues. Deal with and so um, it's it's not really directly related to this uh, to item 11. It's it's more about uh, 
Okay, then, then we should wait to so, the next okay. meeting. So, um, since it is not directly related, is there a motion on item 11? I have a motion that we authorize you to sign the, sign the agreement to accept the money uh, in the insurance company. No, offer. Is there a second? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. It passed unanimously, number 12. Discuss draft of subdivision regulations and design standards and give directions to staff and professional consultants for completing documents for council consideration. Do you have any do, does council have any questions regarding this? We have uh, we have your answers ready. Ready. We've got all the answers. Uh, we've got all the questions. I have questions for you. Yeah, yeah, Julian. Yeah, yeah. To get to get you some background, we met about a month ago uh, to discuss the development standards going forward and what 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 is lacking in the current code versus other cities and what other people are doing. So what we try, well, what we're trying to do is get the subdivision up, uh, subdivision ordinance up to date, so that the standards are are similar and. We want to make sure that we uh, make them comply with the goals of the council and, and, and give direction to the planning and zoning commission. So we looked at you know we're looking at the entire subdivision ordinance, which has building regulations, streets, alleys, uh, utilities, all that, and then going through and providing that. And then a lot of things that are missing from the current ordinance are your design criteria. There is no drainage ordinance to say how you're going to handle drainage runoff in, in, in new urbanism with more concrete curves and storm sewers. Uh, there is a little bit of street design, but not you know, just this geometry. It's not structural. Uh, your, your utility design it isn't covered. Uh, landscape, there are no landscape requirements or ordinances. So as commercial developments come in, are you going to want landscape ordinances and landscape requirements, irrigation, all that to go on? Um, environmental requirements, including stormwater runoff, and you know, your, your construction permits are not required. Um, we're in the process of creating a, uh, a geodetic survey for the city, where you have city monuments around that, so that. Every uh, so all the mapping in the future is all on the same coordinate plane, so that we have maps we can rely on. Uh, parks and recreation requirements, other than the subdivision ordinance, saying that a subdivider of a residential lot is required to uh, use five percent of the total acreage for parks and rec or open or public uses. That's your only requirement so far. It doesn't have design criteria for trails, uh, lakes, irrigation, ball fields, whatever that is. So, uh, you know, that's the And then the other thing is, is uh, lighting requirements on commercial and non-residential tracks. You know, what kind of light, you know, what kind of light pollution do you want to prohibit, allow, you know, the, obviously they want to light up their signs and light their facilities, but what are the requirements for light pollution as it goes across the property? So there's a lot of things missing. And then uh, your, fee, your current fee structure is about one third of any uh, contributing city around here. And you charge about one third of what any other city does for review and coordination and submittals and processing. So, and right now you outsource that mainly to us and we, we we're trying to balance the cost of doing that to what you know the service we provide the majority so, of costs come back to the current citizen and our, and our fund and our budgets so what we're trying to do is instead of the current costs for engineering legal on these, on these aspects i'm not talking about the pd and what we talked about with the first uh, first southwest financial in the past um, we're talking about how to share costs. We want the developer to share that burden 
So the whole thing we're going to be looking at is fuel structure as well. Um, I do have that. I'll be shipping it out to all of y'all. Uh, we have had some preliminary discussion with a couple of council members, but I'll be shipping it out to everybody this summer tonight. Because we are so low on our fuel structure that, again, we're, we want development to come, and we want developers to partner with us and share, share the costs as opposed to being squarely on the burden of currencies. And then, uh, and then uh, we have already placed uh, the development checklist. If you go out to the website and go to the city clerk, get in the planning and tell me we have about three or four months ago we posted all the checklists for all developments. So there is a checklist out there. But there was none prior to three or four months ago. Now, if somebody calls Jennifer and asks what are the requirements for this, you know, submitting a flat or a replant or a site plan, there, there is a checklist out there with, that will meet the minimal requirements that are in compliance with the current subdivision ordinance. Obviously, there's, you know, things, the, the design manuals we were talking about, we want to make sure that they can, we have some teeth to make sure that everything's done according to current standards, not standards from 25 years ago, which is what they Idea. I noticed this past week, Denison Council, they did their downtown design uh, guidelines, and we need it not just in this, but our CDC also needs it because there are other things that are coming along. We don't have some <coughs> guidelines. So, uh, Councilman Flight, do you have any questions regarding this or any suggestions? This is not an action item, it is a discussion. And uh, it is really to give direction. Do you have any comments or direction you would like to give? May Mayor, may I throw a couple of questions out so that the council members can maybe address them or share their thoughts on yes. them as you go down the line? Thank you. Um, a, the, the other thing that a subdivision regulation ordinance does is regulate the procedures for approving plats within the city. I think most of you know if a plat meets all of the design guidelines that Lynn and his firm are working on, you're required to approve it. It's a ministerial act. You can't deny a plat unless your city engineer tells you it doesn't meet all of the requirements. <coughs> um, and they always give comments back to the applicants so they can get it into compliance and try to help them do that you know so that they can move their project forward but one of the questions for your consideration is under your current ordinance plats first go to the P&Z and then the P&Z makes a recommendation to the council and then the council has the ultimate approval over the plat the way this is drafted, and since it's a big change, we want to bring it to your attention and get your input, is, and it, it's a common mechanism, especially for cities that are entering a growth phase, uh, which I think is maybe likely to happen to you all in the near future, you could have very long agendas just full of plats. Um, you can, by ordinance, delegate that the P and Z will have final plat approval so that you all do not see them but if an applicant disagrees with their denial they have the ability to then appeal that denial to the council for your review and consideration but that is something it also speeds up the development process because it's 30 days faster in theory or at least the time between the P and Z meeting and the council meeting that the developer has their answer, that their plat is approved, and then they can then continue moving forward with their project. So I wanted to call out that difference to you, so if you agree or disagree with that, you can let us know so that we can make it safe the way you want it to be, but by your next meeting, when we're hoping that you'll be <coughs> voting on the draft. The other thing that is in here that you don't have right now is a concept that's called an administrative plat. That's a plat that is just making very small changes. It's few, four or fewer lots. It involves less than 40 acres. 
all of the lots already have street frontage, utilities aren't being changed, is essentially maybe somebody's moving a lot line or something, that those plats can just, those very minor ones can just be approved administratively instead of even having to wait um, for the P and Z process. Um, so that is a change. And then the other thing that I didn't know if you wanted to allow these or not, or if you're not sure if you wanted to leave it as an option, and that is whether you want developers to have the opportunity to have a private street or gated community. Um, this, the standards are in it right now, but I wanted to call it to your attention in case um, that's something you agreed or disagreed with. Well, that really, those will, I don't know that the internal driving areas in that um, Van Alstein Senior Living will actually be streets as opposed to parking lot, you know, with access through the parking lot. But there, there are, like, there are some single fam family neighborhoods in other cities where you have to go through a gate to get to someone's house. Um, it's that type of type of thing, and in that situation, an HOA has to take care of those streets because they're not owned by the city. Um, that that can, if there's a problem, get expensive for those who live in there. But you know, they're aware of that when they when they buy in. But now, does this state that 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 if it is a gated community, then they are responsible for that? But yeah, if they make it a private street, they, they would have to have an HOA in order to even be able to have private streets. Okay. Council, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, uh, In the case of the senior living, that would be a set plan. The fire lane would cover the fire cover, so it would, it would be a private entity, so that, that, that's not really the same. Behind the gate. Uh, the other thing about fees I didn't mention is we're talking about possibly doing pro rata and escrow because development is not going to occur sequentially down the street as we do it. Somebody out here might build and have to put some off site utilities. So the people, as they fill in, would, would pay a portion. a portion to the person that if it was the city that put it in or if it was uh, that developer that's on the farthest reach. So we're, we're, we're looking at proportioning the cost of the infrastructure to get to the site to make sure that you know we have the funding mechanism because if they're going this far off site, it might be city participation in that gap. You get it done so when those other properties come in and escrow, the city gets repaid at that point for their, their participation in it and the developer who put it in, it's his refund too. Because so, they're benefiting from something. That's excellent. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding the three items you gave me? Well, the first one was, <laughs> was on the, the uh, yeah, comment on the plan. Whether the what was your views? Did the city council want to have the final say? Would the final say go to the PNC? Now, when there is one, it comes to the okay, council. Okay, but okay. she asked you which one. Okay. Uh, what your opinion was? If, if we have a proper set of rules, and written and regulations, and what we have acceptable, and the PNC says that they will follow those rules and bring the designs and stuff. How about the minor plants approved by administration? Uh, no, okay. And uh, did you have any questions regarding anything else? Uh, yeah, I, well, statements or something. I'm not sure what. But uh, I, from what I understand, this document that you give that we have in front of us is a working plan of what you might make the document like. Is right, that correct? Yeah. And and there's a lot of other documents that go with it that are missing. Yes. That need to be put in. I mean, like there's a, 
uh, uh, city design manual. Yeah, the city design manual has all those support. I didn't streets. see it on the website yet, so I was wondering. No, 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 yeah, yeah. It's, no. It's, okay. it's, it's going to be a volume. It's it's all those design guidelines, the brand new streets. Is it you guys that are developing this document? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. And so eventually you'll get a document and all the ordinances and everything that go together with it, and and you'll bring bring them to us then. Right. Yes. And, and give us about six months to look at them. <laughs> and, and then we'll, yeah, we'll do all of them. No, they're pretty thick. We thought we were doing good with one. We're trying to make sure we're trying to get where we're looking right now. We can. You guys, I'll tell you what. Y'all ask for whatever you want to. If y'all want to take six months, at least you're welcome to take okay, six I'm months. Saying at least a month. Sub say. Subdivisions that aren't planned developments or are priorly platted subdivisions are coming in. Could, could we ask you to get these documents before we get the final ones? Oh, yes. See the drafts yes. of what we'll you're rolling, We'll be rolling down. The main okay, thing is we're going to have a discussion on. Tonight they just want direction. And okay. the next month, okay, my directions we can are, have. Okay, my directions are I, I want curve and gutters. No matter where you're building, I don't want this sloped off gutter stuff. I want the real stuff. Yeah, do you want the real deal? Yeah, yeah. Real deal. <laughs> he wants the real deal, man. That's more about what's. Did I understand correctly into this thing under uh, uh, HOAs? Let's talk about them and like the walls out there on both sides of Billy Sparkle. That I mean, yeah, Billy Sparkle. That 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 has a brick wall on one side and now a shrub wall and everything on the other side that used to have a brick wall. It fell down. Is is that something that the city can require them to maintain under the new plan? That's yes, right. Okay. Like right now we couldn't tell them to go fix. And the PD, yes, we can have them. Yeah, even now we can not tell them to fix it. Go get you. You can. Have oh, them. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's one solved already. Okay. Got uh, another one. I'm working on just. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, Oh, and I do understand correctly that rules and regulations we set for this occur in the plan in the ETJ. Yes. Okay, that they have to follow those same set of rules. Uh, and with your adoption of that resolution earlier tonight, those, these rules apply out there. Okay. So okay. Got the same. So the sooner we can get these rules in effect, the better off we are because we've got people that are thinking about moving here, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I don't understand. What is a curve table? It says we <coughs> can't do this in Van Alstine. Uh, it doesn't have page numbers. How about halfway through it? Is it a definition or is it? It's under, uh, no, it's under uh, is it final plan. It's under final plan. Oh, final, oh, a curve table. Final plan. A curve table when, when, uh, when a property has curves on it. We require a table out there that has the delta, the radius, the tangent length, so that we can relate. Instead of putting all that information around that curve on the proxy line, we, we, they call it they go C one. They call it curve one. So you go up here to C one, and you can see what the delta, the tangent, uh, and all. It just makes it less. It, it, it makes it less cumbersome on okay. the drawing. And provides an alternate location. Okay. Uh, I don't know what TSU is, but I don't know what Coast Service is. That's what they are. Coast Service is a utility provider. Yeah. They provide rest of the And like according to these new rules, everybody has to have an out, right? If there's a way to build an out, you've got to have an out. The house is a If an out is proposed. Alleys are so required. if front of the front, he's talking about if everybody's required to have an alley, only yeah. if an alley is proposed. So only if your zoning requires an alley, then your, your zoning ordinance determines whether or not you require an alley. Okay. So if an alley is required, these are the, these would be the requirements for an alley. Okay. So not not everybody's required to have an alley because of the ordinance. Okay. But the zoning okay. ordinance. So that's why I don't get an alley now, right? Yeah. Some are going to be front entry, some are going to be alley. Yeah, I can put one picture back. I was a freak there. It's really hard to. I, 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 I get, maybe you get a bike up and down, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it is a little something to read about this bike in the middle. Okay, so the plans are that. Do we have an idea of how long this process is going to be? 
to right. get and start getting this stuff? We're, we're, we're going to start. We have a couple of drafts of a couple of the manuals. If you want to see the utility and the drainage manual, are just about finished. Okay. Uh, we're still working. Uh, well, the, the biggest thing, uh, okay, yeah, uh, the street design manual is pretty close. Uh, one thing we don't have is the landscape. We didn't know what, we, we're going to have to have a discussion about that. Okay. And, and how you know how intense you want landscaping to be on sites around in the new commercial areas. Um, so we the parks and recreation is a kind of a master plan. You know, what kind of park requirements you want? What do you want in your parks? What you know? Uh, that so that that's a question. And then lighting is just a, a kind of a checklist. Of what what the goal is, and then we can write the write the requirements to fix that. Have we talked to the planning and zoning committee about this or explain what's going to be the We have been discussing it with them, but we're bringing it to y'all first. And then they'll be getting Because the main thing is we don't want them to start digesting something that y'all are going to be modifying. Okay. We're trying to get the we're trying to get the chapters and pages in the right order that you want to see them. And, and so did I miss it? Did you say the time frame? Well, Frank has asked that for <laughs> next for next month that if we were <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be tight for us, but May, you know, May is May is our is what we'd like to have done because maybe we can have a workshop. We're, we're going to have a workshop. We're about to get into the summer. <coughs> That's when things are about to really ramp up, and that's so May is when we'd like to see it. Okay. But yeah, we'll be cool. rolling out as as engineering produces documents. We'll be rolling them out. Just need to make sure they're consistent with what okay. uh, Julie has in mind for uh, for adoption. So I'm sure happy we don't have the fastest. Well, if you had a workshop, then you could discuss, you know, this, it would be that you could discuss it and yeah. also other. The main thing is to give it to you in pieces. Okay. So that way you can digest it and have questions. Okay. A little bit at a time. I like that thing. Councilman Moore, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I, I do. I think this is very important. Number one, we need to get, get things in a very organized fashion especially with development before uh, we get a landslide of problems, things not being organized properly. Um, I would say that there's a couple things that I, I think we need to definitely spend some time thinking about um, in this is in the future we're going to be building some schools in Van Alstine. We've already got a pretty big headache with the current elementary school and streets around it. I noticed that a lot of um, cities are changing to where there's large streets that get you in and out of, uh, of school systems. Um, I think it would be wise if we put something in in this that when in a in a plan development where there's going to be a school, the streets have to be wider. And we get I think we need to think through all of that. Um, and then, you know, screening for major thoroughfares, um, and and then a homeowners association situations. The private um, private streets really concern me because I've heard of some problems in the past where some HOAs went bankrupt, and all of a sudden there was a big mess on the city didn't have the right to come in, all that kind of stuff, and became a big. Mess. <coughs> Um, the other thing is defining what the city has control of within an HOA. If you look at this document on, under Section D, it talks about notice the lots within this subdivision are governed by the HOA. I think we've got to define that an HOA in a, in a subdivision only controls lots or you know, their property that they own, like, you know, uh, uh, parkland or whatever that they have complete control of, but they do not have any say over what the city has control of. We currently have issues with that in the city of Van Austin because there's an argument over, you know, an HOA has a document that says that, you know, the property. Well, they want to say that the streets are part of the HOA. Well, the streets of that HOA are completely controlled by the city. The city owns those streets and everything. The 
the HOA wants to dictate the, the homeowners on what can be done in those streets. So I think we need to help our citizens as far as identifying some of those things that look, this isn't a private street, this is a street, or, or whatever these different cases are, especially with HOAs, where the city has the alleys and, and they have maintenance of whatever uh, that a third party can't come in and just do what they want. Uh, that we have that clear in the document. Um, and again, like I said, the private, the private streets that really, that, that just really concerns me because um, I personally don't see if something went wrong, an easy route for the city to be able to fix it. Even though the city may have easements and whatnot for their utilities going in, it, it just gets, to me that gets hairy. I mean, okay, so, I mean, I have, I have real concern with that. Um, I don't know that I would want private streets for the, for the city's benefit. <laughs> and your comment uh, on the plants, uh, do you think that uh, it should be the final approval should still come to council or it should be up to the PNC on the plants? I think, uh, I think it's fine to go to PNC. I, I don't necessarily think that we have to give it up at this, at this time. I don't know if it's something that has to go in this document. It seems like it might be something that we could say, you know what, the burden's getting too heavy. Now it's time to pass, pass it on. I, you know, we hardly see flights right now. Now, it, that could change in six months. <laughs> well, you we can always amend. The, you know, well, and, and a lot, what a lot of other cities do around you are the PNC is the final word, but the uh, council uses a consent agenda to just acknowledge. B and Z approval of it, so that you have, you kind of have that back and forth so that the council sees all those coming forward. So you, you could do it as a consent to do that kind of item. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, legally, can we turn down a flat that meets all the requirements? No. I mean, so. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's on there. Yeah, but that, that's is, why some councils just defer it to their P and Z because they, can't, if the PNZ can't turn it down, nor can the council. It's just, it's ministerial. It's just creating a record of approval so it can be signed and filed with the county. It's just, if the engineer says it doesn't meet something in the design manual, then it can be turned down. Now, one question I would have is if, uh, and if the council this way too, if P and Z miss something, are we still covered that that uh, they missed it? They approved the plat, but it didn't meet the P and Z requirements. Yeah, they're, the P. The, I mean, they're they're engineering documents. The the P and Z is going to be relying on the engineer to say it meets the requirements or it doesn't. And so. I'm good with okay. it. Okay. Do you have a problem with the matter plants being approved by administration? No. Do you have any further questions? Okay. Okay. PNZ members are considered officers of the city, and so the dual office holding rules prohibit those two offices from being held by the person who is self-appointment. You can't appoint yourself to that position. But they, they are different from, like, the library board would just be, in, they're just advisory, so Pure advisory boards are not considered 
officers. So there are some boards where council members can serve. Um, on the EDC and the CDC, the Development Corporation Act specifically says that up to three council members can be on it. So that's a carve out that's been made in the law that allows council members to serve on those particular boards. Um, but for the P and Z, there's no carve out and they are considered officers. So the dual office holding rule applies for council member P and Z.
abundance of open reflection. We don't want it to move outside of the property. We want to try and preserve it as much as the mass can. So that's, that's the balance we're trying to achieve. That's the discussion for the day in regard to that. So we will be bringing the documents to you all. I understand that a lot of this is outside of some of our wheelhouses, but the main thing is, you know, for you to take a look at it, if you have to Google some topics and terms, that's nothing but for y'all be aware of what's going on and where we're headed. And that way, as we make modifications to, to the document, we're bringing them for you. Here's what we're modifying, this is what we're looking for, and this is why we're doing that. So. That's great. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a problem with the conceding board to make the decisions on the final decisions on the <coughs> Things like that. 
What we talked about earlier, oh, just the travel, the way, the way. I can tell you from experience that the, 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 uh, the gates and the mechanisms where it's an opticon, whether it's a lock or whatever, uh, those elements fail in emergency situation. You test them as many times as you want to, just to test them, but they typically fail. There's a delay in response, and somebody suffers. That's why. Um, Thank you very much for your input. Can we get each one of the additions when they're added to put in fire things like our sirens and stuff like that? One of those sirens? We've got those on wire additions as well. If you build an addition, then you've got to put one of those in your head. If, if it, what, what, what the design criteria with for the, the sirens that he's talking about the emergency sirens, we'll need to have the criteria as far as we don't want to have too many in. <coughs> do want to have them plotted out properly. They kind of like sprinkler heads. You do want to have proper coverage, but you want to have some overlap too in case one of those sirens fails. But so we would need one per addition, but we don't put that. Because like depending on the size of the addition will depend on how many we need. Yeah, but if, you, so. if you can make the developer build it in and put it and install it, yes, sir. then that means it doesn't cost us anything. That's, that's true. So, the, main, the only thing would be just making sure it's compatible with our with our system. Yeah. So we, we just like water meters or anything else, it would need to be a certain type or size. Yeah. Um, that's great. That's something we need to develop or to do it. And that way we don't have to worry about it. whether they're placed too close together and who cares. That's just perfect. If if you can hear the siren, sirens, both of them, that's fine. That doesn't hurt me. I got you. That's better than not doing it all. Have okay. interest in that? Have interest in that outdoor warning siren fee? Some cities have ordinances where part of what's collected when they come to plat is a certain dollar amount per acre that goes into a fund to pay for those sirens so that okay. the proper number get installed. Because like Frank was saying, the different developments are different sizes, so. You, if you come first and you're small, you may pay for a siren, but then you pay for it for all the neighbors who come afterwards because right. it's yeah. serving them. But there, there are ways to address that to make it fair so that everyone's paying their equal share. Because honestly, you can set out the grid, and if we set them out in the grid, and as, as developments come in, then they're properly spaced and placed, and we have the right overlap, and it, and it, and it doesn't matter, but it does matter to have just just the right amount of distance. And that way we, we get the right amount of distance and it's all Well, I assume I'm the right amount of distance, okay, where well, I'm at. Because I just feel good. Right, it's right there at the park, so yes, yeah. you are. And, 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 and yet there's times I can't hear it. There's times it'll go off and the wind's blowing from the west towards the east, you don't hear it. So if you had an extra one in the neighborhood, it might be helpful. <laughs> yes, and that's where a grid would come in. To where it would be north, south, east, and west. Yeah. You'd have the right overlap. Okay. Is that all? Yes, finalize Billy? <laughs> Why not? Okay. We thank you very much for this, Lynn. I think one of the most important things that I've heard from the council tonight is the widening of the streets where there is a school. We have a school at the south end of town that has a very narrow street, and if the school's letting out, a fire truck, ambulance, nothing could get down that street. And actually, your current code has that requirement. It is there. And the one thing that's missing is the completion of the loop. Mm -hmm. if you it, if you it was never completed. If you complete so the loop, is there some way to make sure? in the that's future well, that's, that's that that is completed because it was going to be safe but it's not yeah and, that, and that's part and then uh, that make, that puts the burden on the adjacent developer or the city to acquire that right away at the time of the school development so that that's part of the mechanism we're talking about that would give the council the right to make that loop my cost a little bit but it gives you the right to I can make that requirement get it in negotiations to make that. Lynn is correct. From the school going eastward, the street is the right width. Going back to the west, the street actually is narrow and it is it, it isn't proper in what, what design. Okay. And then 
park on the street on both sides, which gives you a one lane. You're going no. Well, and then where Ruth turns and goes south and goes across the future of Preston, Georgetown Village, and that is all. That is the, that is planted and designed to be for the set of wide. So, but we got to get it there. We got to get across the lake. Can't can we just not allow parking on one on the one side of the street? Good. During the hours that school would be letting out. Good. And then that would be going good. That would be a good thing to bring up. Okay. Well, it's never on the agenda. <laughs> well, Mr. Baker. I, 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 it, it, it really is a danger and a hazard at this at the south end. You can do it before you leave. Not the blame for it. I don't mind being blamed for it because once you get there, you can't do anything. And if you're going one way, someone walks you the other way. You're going in reverse two blocks. And they since they've made it one way so far up, it's really it's really difficult. And when the weather is wet. The road that you take that loop, you can get stuck. So I think that would be an excellent agenda. When you go by the swimming pool, you can go straight, you know, sort of cheap and go around. You go around the, the, the alley that you're going the wrong direction on and not supposed to be on. Uh -huh. Okay. That's the loop? I didn't know that. I know that. that was called a crash. That was the road. That the was the trash truck. And that trash truck route, and that was all it was ever meant to be on. Going yes. the other direction. Well, you get a lot of well, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I was All right. where this loop was, but that was uh, Now you know. Next we have department reports. We will have our library report. And thank you very much for also being your secretary. It's my pleasure. Um, let's see, for the library, this uh, statistics represent for the month of February. Door count, we had uh, a little over 2,500 people come in. Uh, circulation is 1,960. We have a new heater at the library. Um, in the older part of the library, there is a, call them the twins, and they are 46 years old. And uh, two 510 units, one of which unfortunately expired and was replaced last week. But we still have one 46-year-old unit that's, that's working. Um, we will be hosting a book review and author presentation from a local uh, true crime author, Janice Tracy. Uh, that will be March 21st. February 20th, we uh, hosted a gaming tournament with 53 teams attending, and I also I personally attended a three-day intensive training seminar hosted by the Texas State Library in Whitesboro, and had the pleasure with working with um, several other area directors. One of which was uh, Juanita Hazelton, who was the director of our our own library for 16 years. Thank you. We'll have our police report. Uh, we've been quite busy last week with all the ops. Hopefully we're not going to get another round of that. Uh, as many of y'all probably seen, we were able to utilize the uh, Humvees. Uh, I also, two weeks ago, attended uh, Manicore Chief School in Kerrville. <coughs> it was a good experience. A lot of interesting laws maybe being passed down in Austin. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, I guess we're, we're prepared for tomorrow's round. Hopefully it, it won't be as bad as it has been in the last two weeks. Well, you never know about the weather. Fire report? Uh, kind of the same as TV. We've been extremely busy with weather. Uh, good news on the fire engine. They sent me pictures over the weekend. It's coming together pretty quick. They said they're trying to get them online, so we can go see them. But they're not there yet. Hopefully, it's but It does look like end of the month, beginning of April. Thank you. Okay, we will go to uh, uh, city manager's report. Mayor Council uh, sent out an email. Kim Manka contacted me uh, about the crossings they're going to be putting in, hopefully starting tomorrow, depending on the weather. The, uh, they've gone from telling me that they're going to put in rubber pads to now they're going to be putting concrete pads in them that are in between the rail. Uh, pieces it's supposed to have more longevity, but um, honest to goodness, as, as, as long as they can get moving, um, one sound as good as the other. But he said they could get started on it. Um, they're going to be dumping some rock out of the industrial <coughs> um, to improve the crossings before they uh, before they get ready to start pulling the spikes. But they'll be doing some notice before they're ready to do that so we can coordinate properly. 
gotten uh, some concerns about uh, the tech stock, specifically Highway 5 uh, through town and the number of potholes and damage that's been done due to the, uh, the weather. And uh, got a response. I, I think I shipped it out to council to give y'all a kind of a heads up. Okay, some of y'all have been getting some uh, input from citizens and community members. And uh, the lead engineer, Aaron Bloom of TechStot, said that uh, his crew has been working diligently, but they're overworked because of the, uh, the, uh, the weather. But it is on his list for them to get started on it uh, in the near future, repairing Highway 5 and all of our uh, thoroughfares through town. Um, schools are moving forward. Uh, elementary and the high school have their plans back from uh, engineering, uh, Veritas, as well as uh, uh, Fire Marshal's office. And they're getting ready to start shaking dirt and moving things around. It just so happens that the, uh, the weather's been uh, difficult for them to get anything accomplished as well. Um, and City Hall, uh, working on putting together some uh, opportunities for us on to figure out what we're going to be doing in regards to City Hall. Um, so I'll be bringing them something y'all uh, next council meeting for y'all to consider and possibly uh, digest and take action on. We'll see, we'll see how it comes together. But, uh, still working on this. <coughs> still working on this agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Council, do you have any closing comments? Uh, yeah, I think I do. One, probably not. <laughs> right, well, I'm just going to mention that there, I think there's a planning and zoning position available that somebody needs to start applying for. And uh, we will be, I think, I went, well, no, that was on the down. Is there something that I was going to ask the city manager? I know I've asked him about this before, that the signs on the north south that say exit off to get in Van Austin that are both down and gone and laying out there on the ground. I know you're talking to text on that. Can we go higher on the list of somebody at text on and, or somebody at the state level? Start with saying, we can go to Paris. Uh -huh. I know the I am in contact with the man that's over at District for text stop. Well, that would he be has nice. Paris. Okay. Can we talk to him? See what he can do. The 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 two signs on the north side of town. Okay. Oh, our exit sign on 75. Yeah, this going south. Uh, this is a very efficient man. Or, or to not get off here if you want to go to the DFW, that can miss it. Well, you can only, he can only control it to the county line because when you face the county oh, line, they're in the Dallas district, this, but we're in Paris. This is all in the county. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, do you have a closing statement? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Russell. No. Okay. Uh, we just have to uh, report in case anybody didn't know our Van Austin Panthers boys in the midst of the playoffs during the regional round. They're playing tomorrow up in Dennis. And That's Alma Mater. Half, <laughs> half time we're ahead of 49 26. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think we're going all the way. Good. That's wonderful. What else is going to be Oh, well, there's going to be another kind of Yes, Okay. Yeah, Keep that all team beautiful. Is having an event on the 16th, Monday the 16th, here at the Center. We'll try again where they're going to show them all kinds of things. Thank you very much. We are going to go in executive session. Are we still, we will not be going in executive session. Is there a motion that we adjourn? I mean, yeah. We have a motion. <laughs> We're dead go. We're dead go. We've got plenty of seconds. We <laughs> pick someone who is almost in favor that we adjourn. <laughs> okay, it is unanimous. We are adjourned at 746. You can still make it.